Sonic. Lab. TV. This is the M Audio Fast Track Ultra 8R. It's a rack mount USB 2 audio interface with eight octane preamps, eight outputs, plus SP diff and MIDI IO. Right, so in the box you get your mains cable, USB 2 cable, you also get a breakout cable, which is the MIDI and the SP diff IO. You screw this on the back of the unit via this little D type connector. You also get power supply, it's an inline version, which is good because I prefer those because that means that you don't actually have to uh, try and cram them all into a plug board. Bundled in the box, you also get these three CDs. First CD is the drivers and manuals, and the second CD is the Pro Tools M Powered 7 demo. In fact, both of these CDs ended up being blank, so they weren't much use to me, but I did download what I needed from the web without any trouble at all. The third CD is a version of Ableton Live Lite 6. M Audio Enhanced. The unit itself is actually made uh, quite sturdily. It's quite solid metal. It's a rack mount, as I say, aluminium front panel. Most of the audio connections are on the rear. You've got eight of these combi connectors, uh, which are kind of take an XLR or uh, a quarter inch jack. Incidentally, I did find the quarter inch jack was a bit grabby and I couldn't couldn't get it out very easily and if you had cheap jacks you might find you leave a bit of it in there so watch out for that. The analog outputs are also all on quarter inch balanced jacks. On the front panel all the channels have level indicators uh, so you've got signal presence as well as a clip they've all got gain controls the first two channels are switchable between the mic line connectors on the rear and the instrument input on the front incidentally the gain controls on the other six channels only affects the mic input all of the gains have a minus 20 db pad on them so when you pull it out like this you get a minus 20 db and then you can change the range one thing i did find is they did seem to come off quite easily, which was a little bit disconcerting because uh, in the heat of the moment, you might find you drop it on the floor in a dark club. Then you've also got phantom power switchable in blocks of four, one to four and five to eight. You've got two headphone outs with individual gains. These take their feeds from the mix that's going to output one and two and also three and four. The final gain control affects the master output, which is sent via output one and two on the rear of the unit. There's also a MIDI indicator light and a power switch. As far as the sound goes, the mic amps sound pretty good to me, actually. Um, the only thing I did notice, there seemed to be a little bit of a peak in the upper mid range. And to my ears, they weren't quite as pleasing or as smooth, perhaps, as my Mackie VLZ3 mic amps. But it did give you plenty of bottom end. So, you know, as you can tell, mic amps are different in different units. They have different characteristics, but they were perfectly fine. One of the really nice things about this system is the control panel. It allows you to access the onboard MX Core DSP that lives on the unit itself. This enables you to set up four separate stereo zero latency mixes that are a balance between the physical inputs of the unit and the USB returns. This runs separate to the door, so you can have separate mixes set up in this control panel here. You can also add effects to the first two stereo mixes. So let's just have a quick listen to the effects. This is my mic channel here. I'll just switch them on. One, two, two. I can tweak. One, two. Uh, delay. There should be enough there to keep the vocalist happy to give them a bit of wet in the mix. Pricing. Full US retail is $629.95. I've seen it for as little as $499 US. Uh, that equates to 399 list UK pounds, but I've seen it for as little as about $330. With all these mic amps on board, it's clearly aimed as a recording device, and perhaps one that you would take perhaps with a laptop uh, to do location recording of a band or a small ensemble. With this in mind, and the fact that you would not maybe not take a mixing desk, I found that there was a couple of things that it was lacking. One of them was just the amount of gain that you could add into the system. Uh, if you're actually recording a bunch of people in a room with mics, you need quite a loud monitoring system to hear in your headphones at least what's going on. And I couldn't get that much out of it, basically. Uh, I had to really turn up the mic amps to the point where I was worried about clipping so that I could hear things loud in my headphones even if I had the headphones turned up. So it would be nice to see some extra gain on those headphone amps to be able to give you that extra monitoring capability. Uh, the other thing was, of course, uh, with the line inputs, there's no gain at all. The front panel gains, apart from the first two channels, only affect the mic inputs. It would have been really nice to see either uh, the gains affecting the line inputs or have a switchable level, say, minus 10 plus 4, so that you could bump up the value of the line inputs so you could kind of keep the whole thing more in the box without the use of a mixing desk. 
Overall, I was impressed with the Fast Track Ultra 8R. The build quality, the high sample rate, the stability of the USB connection, and also the Core MX DSP Mix control panel really made me feel confident that I could use this in a professional situation. However, I think the gain of the headphone amp sort of let it down a little bit. If you're going to use this for a purely live recording situation without a mixing console, you might run into some difficulties.